Creating beautiful websites, animations, and interactions is one of the key reasons people are getting into Webflow. However, not all animations and interactions are created equal. And so in this video, I'm going to break down every single animation type into three tiers, simple, advanced, and crazy animation. So the next time you wanna create animations for your website, you'll know exactly how to go about it. Let's get started with the simplest and easiest animations to create. And these are called transitions because they are basically an animation that transitions between two states, usually a normal state and a hover state. So in this example that we have here, we have the navigation and it has some kind of a hover state where as you hover on top of these buttons, you get an underline under the button. And the way that this is created is we've got the buttons and you can see that we have a states here, a normal state or a non-state and a hover state. If we go there, we can see that this element has a box shadow. So basically a white shadow, three pixels moving up. And the normal state has the same shadow applied, but it's actually on zero. So basically what's happening is that there is a transition here, and this is basically the animation that moves it from the normal state of zero pixels into animating into three pixels. So this is basically animating the property of a shadow, but we can basically animate any property we want. For example, if we go into the hover state and change a property like the background color, let's say I want some kind of a transparent background, uh, something like this. And so now we have the hover state in this position and I can go back into the non state and add a transition to the background color in this case, but note how many properties here I can animate. In this case, I'm going to animate the background color. And now you'll be able to see that as I hover on top of them, the background is also animating. So this is the most simple animation you can set up in Webflow. Webflow's advanced animation take the same concept of animating some property from one state into another state and takes this to a whole new level with much more control. Let me show you an example. So in this case, we have this navigation that as we hover on top of it, not only the you know, the title of the uh, property uh, moves, but we also get this image that shows this image also reacts to our mouse movement and we've got the arrow changing color. So there's a lot more going on here than just changing of one property. And the way that this is set up is that we're using now the interactions panel. And as you can see, we can animate a bunch more properties um, based on what we want to happen if we're hovering on top of an element or we're moving the mouse on top of it or if it scrolls into view or if the something changes in the page. So if the page is loaded. And the way that this happens is in this example, for example, we have a mouse hover state and then we have an animation. Now this is basically a timeline that enables you not just step from state A to state B as we've seen in the simple animation, but basically a timeline that can have uh, elements changing, multiple elements changing over multiple uh, timelines. So in this case, for example, we have the arrow that's moving. You can see from the normal state, which is zero, moving into a little bit to the top and to the right side. We also have the text color of this arrow changing from white, gray, uh, changes into black. We also have a different element, which is the image having, having an opacity from zero to a hundred showing up. So we can make the animations much more complex, right? And in this website, you can see that we have this loading animation. We've got a text animation here. The text is being revealed and we've got these unique hover animation. All of these things, you can ac accomplish them with Webflow's um, interaction panel and you can be as creative as you want. You can create parallax. You can do so many things with this. By the way, if you want a full on tutorial on how these animations in this example website were created, we have a full on video explaining them. So check out that full video. Another type of advanced animation that you can use within Webflow is embedding interactive files that Webflow supports. The first one is Lodi. Now Lodi is basically a vector animation that you can either download or export right from Adobe After Effects, which is an animation software. And you can basically go ahead and upload it into your website. So in this case, let's say that we have this animation. You can see it. this is a JSON file. So this is an animation file and I can just drag it here into my Webflow website. Now off the gate, this is just playing here, which is really great. But the most interesting thing about this is that this 
uh, file format, the Lottie can be controlled from the interactions panel. So if I go here, for example, if I want to uh, animate this while this is scrolling in view, I can add while scrolling in view and I can create a new animation. And when I have this animation, you'll be able to see that I can control the Lottie itself. Now here, I can say, for example, that when we're starting to scroll, uh, start this from zero, and as we're scrolling through the page, maybe this gets to 100 or something like this. And now you'll be able to see that as I'm scrolling up, it's going backward, and as I'm scrolling down, the scrolls forward. So this is basically connected to my scroll right now. And this, of course, allows you to be very, very creative with how you're embedding your Lodi animations. Next, we have Spline. So Spline is this 3D software, which is basically enables you to create 3D models and then go ahead and embed them right into your Webflow website. And as you can see, they are fully interactive. So quite like Spline, you can add your Spline object into your Webflow project right from the ads panel right here. You can see here we've got the loading animation, the spline scene, and you can address this in and animate the file right from the interactions panel so it can react to your mouse or for other things that are happening on your website. And finally, the new kid on the block, Rive. So Rive is a new format of animation, which is basically something like combining the uh, Lodi file, but also the spline file. So as you can see, this is a vector thing that actually animates, but it also can react to my my mouse in this case, or my cursor as I'm clicking on this, this, uh, this monster jumps. So I can go ahead and embed this and create not just a normal animation, but actually a very powerful interactive animation. Okay, it's time to talk about the crazy animation. So these are the animations that you've probably seen on awards websites, and they're usually require a little bit of custom code. Let's dive into them. So the first and most popular of these award-winning animation is called GSAP. This is basically an animation code library that makes it rather easy to create animation that would be super hard and time consuming to create natively within Webflow. And the most classic one is text staggering. Now, it basically can do what the advanced Webflow animations can do, but really on steroids. So it's more refined, you have more control, and more importantly, performance, which is something that we haven't talked about, but it's really important because you want to make sure that your website loads fast and using a lot of animations and interaction can actually slow down the performance of your website and GSAP just works super, super fa fast and super, super smooth. Now, as I'm recording this video, Webflow has just announced that they have acquired the company behind GSAP and that they are, will be powering the next version of Webflow's native animations. However, I still believe that we're still months away from we're seeing this actually inside of Webflow. So at the moment, using GSAP is still requiring you writing code. However, there's a really cool tool called Slater that uses AI to write code, which you can embed directly into your Webflow website. And of course, you can use your own favorite AI tool like ChatGPT or Claude to tell it to write GSAP animation code for you. All you have to do is to explain them what you want to animate and the classes that you're using for each element so that you would know how to animate it for you. Now, the most crazy type of animation is called WebGL. Now, WebGL is basically a kind of a rendering engine that renders 3D and 2D animation and that can support things like physics and shades. Now, this is an actual JavaScript API, so it's not really easy to code at all, but there's a few ways to use it. A popular library that makes this technology a little bit easier to use is called 3JS, which is basically enables you to take 3D objects and manipulate them and animate animate them in the browser. Another resource that you can use is CodeDrop, which has some very cool interactions demo alongside with the code, which you can then copy and use on your own Webflow website. Now I've used some of this code snippet that I found there to create this very cool image transition effect in my portfolio website. So here the text animations are created with GSAP, but the image transition is happening using code that I found on uh, code drops. Now, if you'd like to see how this website was created, I also have a video covering that. So check the links in the description if you want to deep dive on those animations. And the easiest way to create WebGL animation is using this very cool new tool called Unicorn Studio, which gives you a simple interface to create animations, which you can then embed directly into your Webflow websites. So now that you know how every single animation is created, go do something cool.